Hi, this is Jindo. Welcome to Tree Leaf. I'm grateful for you being here today. Gratitude is something that is very often hard for us to find in our hearts here in this life. I mean, it's easy to be grateful when something goes our way, but can we be grateful when things go a way that we would rather not, sometimes in a way that to our eyes is very unpleasant, very ugly? This is a Buddha's gratitude. I posted a, a lovely passage by the uh, John Dido Lori, who has left our visible world. And it is about a practice of gratitude so simple that I recommend it to everyone. Very simply, uh, if you were to take 10 minutes every day complaining about what this guy did or this situation or how your shoes are too tight or how the roof leaks, and continue that for a year, at the end of the year there would still be great bitterness in your heart. But if you were to take 10 minutes every day and express gratitude for this life, even for the things that don't always go our way, you would feel a great generosity and openness and light in this life. So John recommends that we express gratitude for the sunshine, the grass that grows, the sound of little children, even the things that are difficult in our life, if we see them a certain way, we can come to appreciate them. For example, the boss who yells at you at work, well, he teaches you about patience. The times of sickness, they teach you about the value of life and health. You, you may hear some workmen outside. They're fixing our front door, which we haven't been able to lock properly since the big earthquake that was here a couple of years ago. I express gratitude uh, to them today to finally fixing our door. But I also can find gratitude for this earth and the great earthquake. Without earthquakes, we wouldn't be here. Without the land that is formed by earthquakes, we would have no place to place our feet and even the great tidal wave that came and all that followed teach us the preciousness of this life. This is a wonderful practice of gratitude. But I am here to say that such a practice is as beautiful as it is, is not limited. And in a Buddha's eyes, a Buddha's gratitude is boundless. Daito Lori, if you listen to his many talks, would speak about this so many times too. You see, most of the things we were just listing up as gratitude, we were looking for the bright side, the payoff, what's ultimately in it for us. The earthquake teaches us uh, about life. Being sick lets us appreciate our times of health. The ugly boss or the difficulties in this world teach us about patience. The war on the other side of the world might show us something about the value of peace. But we're still making judgments. We're still trying to find out in a very, very subtle way what's in it for me. And don't get me wrong. As I said, that's a beautiful, beautiful practice. But our Buddhist way in Shikantaza is to find a great gratitude that is not a matter of what pleases us to our heart. It's very hard to explain, but all things come on their own terms and just are what they are. And we are so, so grateful for all of it, both the beautiful and the ugly, both that which benefits us and that which does not. We drop all thought of an us to benefit. We drop all thought of a balance sheet or some gain to win. In this way, all things are what they are and all is great. Kind of a win-win. I 
would like to say that in this Buddhist way we need both this sense of daily gratitude, looking on the bright side, seeing the silver lining in the clouds, but can we find a type of gratitude that doesn't necessarily say, well, I don't like the rain on my picnic, but it makes the flowers grow. Instead, can we just say, the rain is the rain, and in each drop of that rain is contained everything, a jewel in Indra's net, all time and space, in which everything just is, and we are grateful. It's a gratitude so great, there's not even a we to feel grateful. It's a grateful so great that one need not even feel it. A kind of natural gratitude that is just all reality itself. When we sit Shikantaza, we are this gratitude, this gratitude just sitting. Even gratitude for the wars, the terrible situation, the people suffering in places like Syria today. Yes, there's a certain gratitude, even as we cry, even as we work for peace. This is very important to remember about our Buddhist way. The gratitude, the great gratitude of which I speak, does not mean that we have to feel gratitude and accept everything just as it is. It's a greater gratitude, a primal gratitude, so great that it lets us, at the same time on this earth, not accept the ugliness. How to explain? I might say that my garden is beautiful because there are flowers, and I might see the weeds as a hindrance, in the Buddha's eyes, there are no flowers, there are no weeds. It's all a great garden of gratitude. Yet, I can water the flowers and pluck the weeds. I can try to make this world better. I can accept disease, not because it just simply teaches me about life. I can accept that life and death and youth and old age and sickness and health, and birth, and death, and birth again, are the great dance. And I can feel immeasurable gratitude, but yet I can take my medicine and seek to cure the disease, accepting the disease with complete non-judgment and gratitude, openness to everything, rejecting nothing, at the same time. In this life we judge, we try to make better, cure the disease, stop the war, feed the hungry child, make this world better. Yet at the same time in our hearts, immeasurable, boundless, gratitude. Can we sit as that? I'm so grateful you're here.